Hello everyone and welcome to Linda Sue Plants for You. <coughs> Today we're going to talk about my beautiful boat lily, also known as a Tradescanthia uh, <coughs> spathacea, also known as the Roeo spathacea or Roeo discolor or Moses in the Cradle. I've also heard it referred to as the oyster plant. And there's probably other names that I haven't heard. But at any rate, this beautiful plant is growing like a weed. Um, I did have some fallout here this summer and I want to rectify that while I'm repotting. I'm going to be putting her back in this pot um, but not before I remove some of the growth because my daughter and granddaughter have both expressed an interest in um, having a, a, a little piece of her. So that is what we're going to do here right now. Um, hmm. I've already taken off the, the hook and I have removed her earlier from her her pot because she was really root bound and embedded in there and I, I didn't want to go through all that and make the video two hours long so um, right now we're going to work on getting these in these smaller pots I want to try and I'm going to put one in each of these for my for my girls. And as I said, they grow so fast, so it it really it doesn't take long to get new growth. Oh, look at she broke off. But you know what? I'm just going to stick that in there and she will grow because that's how easy she is. Now, I'm not sure <clears throat> I'm going to grab my green ball just because it gives me a little more room. And once again, it wouldn't be holding the soup plants for your video if I didn't forget something. <clears throat> I wasn't sure I would need that, so technically I didn't forget. So you can forgive me on that. Um, <clears throat> all right, that gives me a little more room to make messes here without getting it all over the floor. I'm going to try and take off whatever's dried up here, and I have a few leaves. As you can see, it's not really a big problem, though. I mean, I guess it is if you look at it from it's a it's a living thing, and part of it is dying off here, but it's. I don't know if you can see these little shoots coming up under here, but they, it, for every leaf that you pull off of here, you got new growth coming through as well. Now this is an epithetic plant, and it likes to be kept kind of on the dry side. Not quite as dry as I had it, but on the dry side. Now, if you if you over you can overwater this plant very easily. So, if you're a heavy waterer, just be careful that you don't overwater. You wanna.
try and make sure that the soil is fairly dry before you add new water. Or for those of you that just water a tiny bit at a time, I guess it won't be a it won't be that big of an issue. But we all have different methods of watering and mine tends to be when I water I like to give it a lot of water. I like to give her a good drink. Kind of like what happens outside, you know, when you when you get a good pouring rain and you can see the grass green up and the leaves on the trees and the buds coming out. Of course, that's a conversation more for spring, isn't it? We're, we're heading towards the end of August here and winding down. <clears throat> we'll be heading into winter soon. I know a lot of people don't like that sounds of that, but for me it's I enjoy this this time of year. I enjoy spring and fall. I love seeing all the new things pop up in spring. And I also love fall after a long hot summer. I welcome the cool dry days. Absolutely love them. All right. There's a lot of roots here and I'm trying not to break them off. Now, I did just water this yesterday and look how dry it is. You can actually see the, the dust coming off of it. So she's definitely ready to be split up or go in a bigger pot and I would normally at this point I would be putting her in a bigger pot but because I'm going to take part of the plant away um, we won't <clears throat> we won't need a bigger pot a few more a few more little crispies down there all right, now I may have to get a knife to separate these. And that I was not counting on because I thought they would just, once I got it out of the pot, they would kind of fall away from each other, but that's not happening. So let me see if I can just loosen this up a little more and no, I don't think, I don't think that's going to work. Oh, well, this is my weekend to have my great-grandson, but that's not going to happen because poor little guy is under quarantine at five years old because his daycare teacher has COVID. So my granddaughter went to take him to school a couple days ago and there was a sign on the door. And I'm sure they probably emailed her and she just didn't catch it, but at any rate, that's what happened. And so now he has to be quarantined for 10 to 14 days because he was exposed. This, it was his teacher who had it and my granddaughter is pregnant so I'm a little concerned about her but because he, my great-grandson is not showing symptoms I'm hoping and I know that you can be contagious and be asymptomatic I know that but I'm just I'm just gonna I'm just gonna run with this and and be grateful he doesn't have symptoms and hope that that's gonna get them th through I'm not sure if you can hear. I am breaking a few of these roots. I'm not happy about that, but 
I think I can pull this apart. Wow. That is really a massive root system going on under there. And, you know, I'm not really too worried about it because, like I said, she was in such bad shape. Or maybe I didn't see. I don't know. But when I got her, she was in a box with a lot of other plants that got caught in the mail for several weeks. She was soaking wet. Her leaves were just limp. And I honestly, I didn't think she was going to make it. I only had a tiny piece that was worthy of trying to save. And I laid that with the other plants out on some newspaper for a couple of days, let them dry out, and then I uh, potted her up. And she started to show signs of coming back to life. So I just kept taking care of her, and eventually she grew very big. And like I said, she could even be bigger than this had I repotted her into a bigger pot and probably watered her a little more often. She'd probably be twice the size, but I'm not, I wasn't looking to make turn her into a big, huge plant. So, I'm cutting a little bit of the roots to try to pull this apart. Another way of doing this, and probably the better way, is to take a knife and cut straight down, which I probably should have done. But This is a lot of stress on the plant. try to keep as many roots on her as I can. I could just cut these, but I really hate cutting roots off. I, I know there's people who won't agree with me on that, but I really feel like unless the roots are rotted, they're, they're there for a reason, and they're feeding the plant. Oh, boy. So I feel like if you cut even some of the roots off, it's going to set the plant back a little bit. I mean, it's not going to kill it, but it, 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 it is, in my opinion, it's most likely preventing it from growth that it would have otherwise had. So, not a big deal. Just, all right, I'm going to stick her in there. And I'm... <coughs> I would like to put one more of these back in with the mother plant, and I think that's going to be this one. All right. And this one, this is not going to work. This is all connected to one crown, I believe. Am I going to get roots? And it's important to get roots. Although I, I think it will, it will root without having roots to begin with. It will, this is one of those plants that just, they root pretty easily. So, here's the deal. These are not going to fit in those little pots that I had set aside. And 
this is all well actually it's not I think I might be able to get this this piece away from the mother let's see and I I don't mind sharing my plants but I I really didn't want to chop it up that bad so <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out where I can get the the best piece off of here without harming the roots and I think it's going to be right here because it's already loose and I can see she's got roots there we go there we go that's what I was hoping for yay we got success okay see the amount of roots she's got That's a good cutting. That's a wonderful, wonderful specimen there. So I'll put one in there, and let's see if we can get another one of those. Maybe we'll get another one off of her, huh? Maybe not. Okay, let's look at this one. Now where I'm cutting, I'm trying not to cut into the stem as best I can, except where I need to separate it. And I did it. Yay, it worked. Okay. Now I want to try and keep as many of the roots with the smaller piece as I can to give her the best possible start for her. So let's see what we got going on here. There we go. That's a good. That's a good root. Good, good hunk of roots, right? All right. And that one we will put in the other pot. Now, this this is about the size. I should say this one. This is about the size of the one that I started with. The only viable piece that was left of, of everything that she sent me because of, of the water. Um, but all this came about. And like I've said, I mean, there was <laughs> there was a lot more to be to be had. So all right, let's let's see if we can't get these in here quickly. <sighs> that was a job. I'm just using my regular potting mix uh, with some added perlite. This is what it looks like. And I'm going to put her down. Now I'm only going to bury her up to here. Um, most plants, there are some exceptions to this. But most plants do not like, you don't want to reap, you don't want to put them any further in the soil than what they originally were because you'll rot the, you'll rot the, um, the main stem. If it's not used to being under, under moisture, you know, under the soil. This plant makes a beautiful haying, haying plant as well. It, it
and you can grow it on a on a rock you can grow it on a piece of wood She is a little wobbly, but hopefully <coughs> once she starts developing roots, she'll be okay. Or I should say more roots. Trying to get everything ready for winter here on the inside because... In another month or two, I'll have to be worrying about everything outside. And I'd like to have all my indoor things in in place. And I'm going to be doing a lot of moving around of plants as well. Only because... Some have outgrown their spot, and some are uh, just not doing as well as I'd like. One of those is my are my begonias, my cane begonias, and I have a few that are Rex begonias too. I think one or two of those. But you know, I moved them from my living room to my dining room, and they were in my east window, and. I think they're getting too much light. Too much light in the morning. And they're fading. So, not sure where I'm going to put them yet. Where they won't get that kind of light, but I'm, I'm working on it. Okay. So there we have those two. Now, let's now those of you that know me also know that I do not like using dirty pots, but I am not going to wait. I'm not going to make you wait for me to wash this out, partly because I just repotted this not that long ago. sure it'll be safe. Well, she wanted to start hanging over the edge of the pot. I can see that. <coughs> And I'm okay with that. She can do that if she wants to. But for right now, so right now we're just going to get them upright as much as possible and then that she's sturdy in there and then if she wants to go to the end that's okay she can do that Okay. 
Tonight is fish Friday night. I'm excited. I love seafood. I love fish. Almost every kind of fish. And we have a restaurant. I'm sure I've talked about it before. I know I have. A local restaurant here that's... It's actually started out as an ice cream store. An ice cream drive through And it's called... Lazy... Be Lazy Diner. And they've got all kinds of different things to choose from. They're, they're really, I heard a rumor that they um, bought out the building next door, or down there, yeah, next door, which is a huge bar. And if they turn that into a full-scale restaurant, they're going to do very well because they're their food is good and it's reasonable and I mean it's not a fancy sit down type of place so we call in our order and my hubby goes and picks it up and sometimes I get cod I usually get walleye I like the baked baked walleye with potato pancakes and applesauce and I treat myself to a small chocolate malt, which is hard to get now. I mean, most restaurants carry shakes, but to me that's just milk and ice cream. I love the taste of the malt. Just about done here, folks. One more hunk to put in there. There. I think she looks pretty. I'm not going to make you wait while I clean up this mess. I'm going to finish filling her in. And then I'll, I'll show you the finished product after I'm done. Okay. Alrighty, and there we are. All cleaned up and ready to go. These little ones are for my girls, and this one's going back in my window. And honestly, it doesn't look like I even took anything off of her. But as she grows some more, I'll give them some more cuttings to add to what I'm giving them here and let them get acclimated to their new house. And and then we'll go from there. But, yeah, I think she's going to do just fine. Beautiful plant. Easy to care for. Beautiful color. You can see the undersides of the leaves. That beautiful purple. So. Very nice plant. Okay. Well, I hope you all have a good weekend. If I don't see you or, or talk to you before then. And if not, well, maybe I might be back. We'll see. Have a good Friday night. Bye now.